Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to look at profit and uh, maximizing profit uh, from an economic perspective. All this information is in your book and the chapters and pages marked. And um, more specifically, we'll look at the difference between what are known as implicit and explicit costs. We'll talk about two different types of profit, both accounting and economic profit. And we'll talk about how to calculate our profit. And we'll discuss how to figure out what the profit maximizing level of output is uh, for a firm. So first off, we want to start by looking at what is profit. And profit is simply uh, the difference between total revenue and total cost. And when we measure revenue, what we're measuring is uh, the price of a good times the number of goods sold. And that gives us our total revenue. So whatever the equilibrium price is in the market, that's our price. And however much the equilibrium quantity is, uh, when we multiply those two together, we get the area of this box here. And that's our total revenue total cost is going to be uh, the sum of what are known as explicit and implicit costs. And when we take total costs and subtract them from total revenue, if the number is positive, we say there was a positive accounting profit. If it's negative, we say essentially that we have a loss. One of the things that comes with revenue is what we call marginal revenue, and that's just the additional revenue created by selling one more unit of output. And when we get to different types of markets, we'll talk about perfect competition first. And in perfect competition, our marginal revenue is equal to our price because everyone pays the exact same price in the market. So the additional revenue generated by another sale is going to be equal to uh, the price. But more generally, any change in total revenue given a change in output will give you your marginal revenue number. When it comes to costs, we have two different types. We have explicit and implicit. Explicit costs are out-of-pocket expenses, um, money that you actually spend in order to acquire something. Ex or implicit costs um, are a little different. Those are kind of the opportunity costs of, the, of your time or of your money or any other resource that you own uh, that you don't actually pay out of pocket for in order to use. So essentially it's the value of the benefits that you give up um, that you could have had if you had used your resources in a different way. So we could think about it in terms of implicit and explicit costs of going to college. Explicit costs are the things that you pay money for. So it's fees, tuition, books, room and board, computers, whatever it is that you buy. Implicit costs, then, are the things that you could have done with your time or with other resources. So it could be um, lost wages. For example, some people will work instead of going straight to college. They'll get out of high school, get a job, and then they have to make that decision. Do I keep this job or do I go back to school? The implicit cost is the wages that they could have earned during the time that they were at the school. Or you could have lost investment income. Maybe you've got money in a savings account. And um, instead of using that to purchase um, purchase books or pay for your tuition, uh, you could have used it to invest and you could have earned a certain amount of uh, interest on that money. And so the, the interest you could have earned is essentially an opportunity cost. It's an implicit cost. Um, and so it should be incorporated into any sort of decision making that you have um, when it comes to whether or not to use your time for one option or for the other. So because profits are not all the same. There are two different types of profits that we often deal with. An accountant looks at profit and says, um, how much revenue did I bring in? And what were my explicit costs? And then the difference between revenue and explicit costs will be my accounting profit. Do I have more money at the end of the year than I did at the beginning? Um, and if I did, then I have an accounting profit. So from an accounting perspective, that's a good thing. Uh, but economists stop and say, but we need to look at the full story. Could I have done better for myself if I had used my resources in a different way? And so we also talk about what's known as economic profit. With economic profit, we look at the total revenue, just like we do with the accounting profit. Uh, but then we stop and say, what were my explicit costs? And what were my implicit costs to get the full picture of my opportunity, uh, opportunity costs of a decision? Could I have used my uh, resources differently? And what am I giving up by taking one action instead of the other? When we add implicit and explicit costs, we end up with a much smaller profit known as economic profit. In some cases, we might have a positive accounting profit, 
but negative economic profit because we could have used our resources more effectively to have made more money for ourselves. And so economists often uh, look at accounting profit and say, yes, that's nice, but what is the actual economic profit before making a decision about whether an action makes sense or not? As way of an example, we could look at Babette and her Cajun Cafe outside of New Orleans. And we could say Babette's Cajun Cafe provides her with $100,000 worth of revenue in the year. And she has $60,000 worth of explicit costs. And she has machinery, which is uh, depreciated to the tune of $5,000 a year. And when we look at that from an accounting perspective, uh, Babette has an accounting profit of $35,000. Her total revenue of $100,000. She has total costs here of $65,000. And the difference between the two would be her accounting profit of $35,000. But is Babette making the right decision? Is she earning an appropriate profit to stay in business, or should she consider some other alternative? The only way to answer that is if we knew her accounting profit. We'd need to know what her implicit costs are, along with her explicit costs. So if we assume that Babette's got the same uh, explicit costs and depreciation and revenue, but then take into account that she could have taken her, her, uh, her machinery, which is currently uh, owned by her, and sold it, and put that money uh, into an interest-bearing account and earn $3,000 worth of income uh, from her capital. And if we assume that she could just sell her business and uh, work for somebody else and she would have earned $34,000 in wages, then we can look and say, um, is she really profitable? Because right now she has a $35,000 accounting profit. But if we incorporate this $37,000 worth of implicit costs, then we could say that Babette's actually got a negative economic profit. So while it makes sense from an accounting perspective to stay open uh, for business and to maintain her cafe, from an economic perspective, she's actually better off if she sells her business, works for somebody else, and earns a higher economic profit. So in general, we could... Um, we could summarize economic profit this way. We could say that if your economic profit is positive, and economic profit for whatever reason is represented by uh, the Greek letter pi, if profit is greater than zero, economic profit, then our resources are being well used. We're doing well for ourselves, um, and we, we couldn't do better. If our economic profit is less than zero, we could use our resources in a better way. Our implicit costs and explicit costs um, outweigh the revenue that we receive, and we should reconsider our decision. If economic profit is zero, we call this normal profit. Uh, and we'll talk about why it's normal profit when we get more into perfect competition. Um, but essentially, in perfect competition, that's where the market rests, at normal profit. Does this mean you're not making money at the end of the year? No. You still have an accounting profit. You still have uh, more money at the end of the year than you had at the beginning. It just means that you couldn't have used your resources in a better or more efficient way. And so from this perspective, uh, economists would say that normal profit is, is perfectly reasonable. And uh, as long as normal profit is zero or greater, then um, you should go forward with the decision that you're making. The last thing we want to talk about is um, what are the conditions under which we're going to maximize our economic profit? Because that's our goal, to maximize profit um, from an economic perspective. And um, what we we use is marginal analysis and this should be a pretty pretty familiar with uh, for you at this point um, we say marginal benefit needs to equal marginal cost if it equals marginal cost then we are uh, maximizing our our profit and uh, and it's called the optimal output rule in essence what it's saying is that if my marginal revenue the money that I get for an additional uh, per uh, sale of goods is greater than the cost that it that it takes for me to make it um, then it's worthwhile to make and sell a unit of goods when my marginal cost um, the additional cost that I incur for making a, a an additional unit of a good is greater than what I'll receive um, then it doesn't make any sense for me uh, to produce and so uh, in this example on this graph, if marginal revenue, if there is a set market price of $18, then we look to see where it crosses the marginal cost curve, and we say that for all of the output units of um, less than 5, it makes sense to produce, because at, at uh, one bushel of tomatoes, the marginal cost is about $8, but I'm receiving 18 so that makes sense. I should, I should sell that bushel. And if I go all the way up to 4 bushels of tomatoes, 
Um, the price there is somewhere between uh, $12 and $16, but I'm receiving $18, so that makes sense. Let's go ahead and produce that bushel and sell it. And then um, at five bushels, the cost of producing, marginal cost of producing that fifth bushel is the same as the price of the, the bushel of tomatoes, and so that makes sense. I should make it and sell. But once I move to the sixth bushel, I see that it costs me more to make that sixth bushel than I'll receive, and so I stop. So how do I maximize revenue? I ensure that marginal revenue equals marginal cost, um, and then I'm happy. Now when we work on some problems, what we're going to assume is that unless you're told otherwise, the cost in information that you receive, marginal cost um, information or average to total cost information, all of that we'll, we're going to assume incorporates both explicit and implicit costs. So we'll assume that all of the information you receive, unless told otherwise, uh, will help generate for us economic profit data. So keep that in mind as you work through problems, and uh, we'll do some practice in class, and I'll see you then. Bye.